Hello everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for April the 11th. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim and I am, work at, uh, I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, CircuitPython is an open source project, but the development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Pacific, except when that coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar that you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app that lists out all of the uh, meetings, including the ones that do end up occurring on Tuesdays if that Monday is a U.S. holiday. We also send notifications about the upcoming, upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, just ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's a note stock to accompany the meeting and the recording. Uh, the note stock contains timestamps to go along with the video. Uh, so when you, so you, uh, you can use the note stock to view only the parts of the video that interest you most and uh, skip around as needed. The meeting tends to run about 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around using the notes. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document in that CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest note stock. Uh, and you can add your notes throughout the entire week. You don't have to add them on Mondays. Um, we put that up uh, in the about the hour or so following the meeting. We put the, the next meeting's notes up, so you can fill those in at any point throughout the week if you'd like. If you wish to participate but you can't attend, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in that document, and then the host will read them during the meeting. So uh, this meeting is going to be held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at uh, all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we are all working on. Uh, the third part and the first of our round robin sections is called Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things uh, folks are doing. Take some time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. The fourth part is status updates. This is our second round robin section. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what you've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth and final section is called In the Weeds. This is an opportunity for more long form discussion. Uh, these discussions can come out of status updates. Um, if we you know, start getting into a topic and it starts growing, uh, we may you know, decide to bump that down to In the Weeds. We can discuss it further later on. Uh, or they can be identified ahead of time uh, and listed out down in that In the Weeds section if uh, it is anticipated that they will be too long for status updates. So that covers how the meeting will go. Uh, first up is going to be community news. So let me take the timestamp for that. Okay, a uh, couple items from this week's Python on uh, hardware uh, community newsletter. Um, we reached the milestone of 350 CircuitPython libraries this week. CircuitPython community reached a big milestone together on Thursday. There are now 350 CircuitPython libraries. The growth is steady and healthy for the project. And there's a link listed here to uh, the Adafruit blog where there was a post um, showing this occasion when it happened. There's some charts and other information in the post. Uh, second item today is a new version of CircuitPython. CircuitPython 7.3.0 beta.1 has been released. This is a new version of CircuitPython that came out last week. Uh, notable changes since the latest uh, stable release, 725, the notable changes are experimental MDNS support, uh, USB to serial JTAG support for REPL on the appropriate boards, initial experimental USB host support, uh, merging of MicroPython 1.18 changes, uh, preliminary Zlib module support, uh, and then GZIP, 
uh, will be added later on to add more functionality to that. Um, PIO uh, has new features wrap and wrap target have been added uh, for support. And then lastly, uh, Keypad has had an enhancement to scan key states immediately upon creation. Uh, you can see all of these items and more information listed on GitHub under the releases page for the CircuitPython uh, repository, which is linked here in the notes doc as well. Uh, next up, we'll take a timestamp, is a, uh, a project from a member of the community this week. It's a, uh, I believe it's pronounced Crux radiometer. I am not 100% certain, but this is... Um, uh, an electronic Crookes radiometer uh, is an actual electrical instrument that basically measures light. Um, and this person has created a uh, CircuitPython version of this using Vector IO. Um, so they shared this in the uh, show and tell uh, channel, I believe, on the Discord, and it'll be included in the newsletter. There's links to GitHub and YouTube if you'd like to see the code or watch the video. Uh, but it's a really neat implementation of a uh, CircuitPython visual widget. So if you're into that sort of thing, take a look at that. Next up uh, is remotely answering, declining, and hanging up calls on your iPhone uh, using CircuitPython BLE and ANCS. Toddbot has added functionality to the CircuitPython Apple BLE notification service library to allow you to answer or decline and hang up the telephone calls uh, remotely using a CircuitPython BLE-enabled device uh, connected to your iPhone. There are links here for Twitter and GitHub to learn more about that. Uh, next up is a USB MIDI controller. This is another USB MIDI controller. This one is made with a Raspberry Pi Pico and is coded with CircuitPython. Uh, and there is a link to DIY Electro Music uh, website in order to learn more about this project. All right, so those are a couple of the items from our weekly newsletter. However, there are many more, so keep a lookout for that coming to your inbox tomorrow. Uh, to recap the newsletter, this is the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. It's a CircuitPython community-run newsletter. It gets emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. There's a link again in the notes. Uh, and it highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. If you'd like to contribute your own news or projects, you can edit uh, the next week's draft on GitHub. You can file a PR to do that. Um, or if, you don't, if you're not set up on GitHub or you'd rather not uh, go through all of that, you can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email to cpnews at adafruit.com. So thank you to everyone who contributes uh, project and news for the newsletter. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka. Uh, so I'll read the overall section. Um, overall this week, we had 34 pull requests merged uh, by 17 authors. A couple of the names that I didn't recognize on the list this week, uh, so these may be newer folks to contributing. Uh, Dom DF Coding, uh, Pontus O, Reese Robinson, uh, and Kurt E. Those were the names that I hadn't uh, didn't recall seeing before, so thank you to all of those folks and all the rest of our contributors across uh, the CircuitPython ecosystem this week. Um, we also had eight reviewers, and we had 24 closed issues by 11 people uh, and 29 opened by 22 people. Uh, so next up, I will pass it over to, I think, Jeff, uh, if you want to tell us about the core. I would be happy to. So the core is the C code that uh, is, a, is at the basis of CircuitPython. And um, within the core, we had 21 pull requests merged from 11, 11 authors, including a couple of those uh, that Tim called out for being uh, new or infrequent contributors. So thank uh, you to Dom DF Coding and Kurt E in particular. Um, and Reese Robinson is a name that is unfamiliar to me as well. And thanks to our three reviewers, that was uh, Dan, Lamore, and me. In terms of pull requests, we've got 12 open pull requests um, that we need to take a look at. Some of those are held for version 8, and uh, most of the rest one, well, about half of them are under a week old. So 
That's good. We just need to continue to keep on top of that. Issues wise, we had 18 issues closed by eight people and 16 open by 12 people. So it's nice to see the uh, raw issues count go down a little bit and also uh, participation from a bunch of folks, leaving us with 524 open issues. When it comes to work that Adafruit prioritizes, we uh, sort those according to milestones. So according to this list, we have two open issues that we'd like to solve within the 7.2 stable release series, and three open issues we'd like to solve before we release version 7.3 as the new stable release series. And then uh, we've got other lists for 7xx and version 8, uh, as well as libraries and long-term issues. And uh, it looks like we do need to catch up on assigning milestones to recently added issues. And that is something that hopefully Dan and I can get uh, onto this week. So as far as what is going on in the core, we've had a number of releases, both a uh, stable release, 7.2.5, and a beta of version 7.3. And it's really helpful if you uh, check those out and let us know if they're working for you, and especially let us know of any problems you encounter. Uh, we can't test everything, so we rely a great deal on our users helping us out by trying alphas, betas, and release candidates. So uh, thank you very much to everyone who does that. And that's what I got for the core. All righty, thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up, I will pass it over to Katni to tell us about the libraries. Thanks, Tim. So this applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with under, uh, I'm sorry, Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few extras such as our cookie cutter. Uh, this week we had 12 pull requests merged from six different authors. Uh, one name that wasn't mentioned earlier that is new to me is M. Kende. Um, and we had six different reviewers. Uh, one of the pull requests that was merged was 83 days old, so it's good to see we're still getting through older PRs, um, as well as keeping up with all of our newer ones. Uh, and that leaves us with 25 open pull requests across all the libraries. We had five issues closed by four people and 13 open by 11 people, leaving us with 630 open issues. 198 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more um, including open pull requests and open issues. If you are looking to get started reviewing, take a look at the open pull requests. Um, if you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, check the code, see if it looks all right to you, leave a comment. All of that is super helpful. And after you're comfortable with that, we can talk about uh, adding you to our review team. Um, if you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. Um, if you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. Um, and we have a guide on contributing to Git and GitHub. Or I'm sorry, contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub. And we're always available on Discord to help out with that. So don't let that side of it intimidate you. We want to help you contribute in a way that works for you. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries. And the updated list was too much for this document. Um, however, you can check out the library report if you're interested in seeing that massive list of updated libraries. And that's what I've got. All right, thanks, Kenny. Uh, next up, I will send it over to maker Melissa to tell us about Blinka. Yeah, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week, we had one pull request merged by one author and two reviewers. There are currently four open pull requests, and there was one closed issue by one person, and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 72 open issues. And we had 12,923 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are up to 88 boards. And that's it. All right, thanks, Melissa. Uh, steadily creeping our way up towards 100 there. That'll be a nice milestone. Um, so the next section is going to be the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is a chance for us to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. As mentioned, this section is held as a round robin where I will start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically, uh, which is uh, all of these are listed in that notes document. Uh, everyone will have a chance to participate. If you're text only or missing the meeting, but you have Hug Reports, you can leave your notes in the document and I'll read off yours uh, as we get to your name in the list. 
Um, I will begin. So my hug reports for this week are, let's see here. Uh, I had a hug for uh, Dan H. and Jeff for reviewing and offering some good suggestions on a core PR that I submitted. Uh, to Dan H. again for helping me get past an issue uh, where I had like an out-of-date version of something in my tool chain and it was preventing me from building successfully. Um, a user on GitHub, uh, AOE, uh, for testing out my page layout and leaving a thorough review on the PR for it. Um, hug report to Katni uh, for appearing on the upcoming deep dive stream to discuss CircuitPython library development and the work going into the PyCon festivities. And my last hug report for this week is uh, another GitHub user named uh, Bill Van Leeuwen, Van Leeuwen. Uh, 424, who um, made their first contribution to CircuitPython. They uh, submitted a PR to add typing to one of the libraries this week. So congrats on the first contribution, and thank you uh, for helping us out. Uh, next up in the list is Ask Patrick W. And I think it looks like Ask Patrick is not in the voice. So I'll read off uh, Ask Patrick W's. Um, and Ask Patrick has one hug report, which is to me, uh, Foamy Guy, for the great streams on Friday. So that's good to hear that folks are enjoying the, uh, the deep dives that I'm carrying on. That's absent. So thank you to Ask Patrick. Uh, and uh, next up is uh, Liz, Blitz City DIY. Hello. Uh, I've got a couple hug reports this week. Uh, hug report to Katni for proofing my first solo new product guide. Um, she gave me excellent documentation, so I was able to follow along nicely. Uh, hug report to Eva for opening a PR to get the TSC 2007 Arduino library into your Arduino library manager. I didn't know that was a thing, uh, so thank you. Uh, hug report to Dan H for appointing me to the TIX library to use with the keypad library, try and do um, long press and short press detection. Also wasn't aware of that, so it'll be good um, and handy to know. And then uh, I wanted to do a hug report to Anne for she proved three guides for me in one day last week. That was a lot of work, so thank you very much. All right, thanks, Liz. Uh, next up is Dan. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks to Jeff for fixing uh, several outstanding bugs in 7.2x and for upcoming 7.3.0. They, they've been languishing and Jeff stepped in right in and did them. Uh, thanks to Katni who uh, was frustrated about not being able to, not having debouncing in the sort of playground library and has figured out a way to use keypad in a very compact way. Um, thanks to Naradoc who uh, has been experimenting with a bug with the ESP32 S2 I2C and found a big clue that if you raise the frequency, it works again, which really helps narrow it down. And thanks to um, Lady Ada for several um, fixes over the weekend for some uh, customer customer issues about boards that aren't quite working right, which we've got in, gotten in already. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is Jeff. All right, I have a group hug, and then I have one for Dan, who had a much simpler solution to a problem that I was trying to solve uh, about if type checking. And uh, yeah, that's what I've got this week. All righty, thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up is Katni. Oof, I was in the wrong window. Um, so I have a hug report for Jeff uh, for helping me with what should have been a pretty simple concept in Python, but no one had explained it to me in a way that clicked until this weekend. So thank you, Jeff, for that. Um, thanks to Dan for helping out with an idea I had involving Keypad and letting me talk through it. Um, thanks to you, Tim, for having me on your upcoming deep dive and a group hug. All right, thanks, Katni. Uh, next up is Kmatch. Hey, thanks, Tim. Um, this may be a repeat hug, but I uh, uh, thought it's worthwhile to give Jeff another big Python constrictor hug, particularly for the frame buffer module. Uh, once I found a way of allocating some memory and pointing it to that, it just kind of worked. It's amazing. Uh, and a special thanks for adding a few comments about which functions were necessary and which ones were optional so I could focus on what needed to be done. Uh, thanks, Jeff. And thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, Kimmich. Uh Next up is Maker Melissa. Uh, this week, I just have a group hug for everyone. Perfect. Thank you, Maker Melissa. Uh, and then last for hug reports is Tammy makes things. Uh, 
sorry, my phone decided not to unlock when I told it to unlock. Um, so I have a hug report for you, Foamy Guy, for the great uh, deep dives into Display I.O. lately. I've been learning a lot that I know I'm going to use, and then a group hug. All right, awesome. Yeah, thank you, Tammy. Uh, so that is the end of Hug Reports. So next up, we will do our second round robin section, which is status updates. Uh, so a reminder, status updates. This is our time to sync up on what we're doing. The section is also held as a round robin where I will start, and then we'll go through the list as they appear in the notes doc. Um, let's see, everyone will have a chance to participate. When I call on you, you can take a couple of minutes, talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you will be doing uh, until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks that are relevant to what people are working on. Uh, if a discussion uh, starts to go a little long, then we can move it down to the in the weeds section to do at the end of our call. So I will uh, get started with this round robin. Uh, so let me timestamp it here. Yep. And then so uh, last week for me, uh, I built the uh, main sort of structural functionality for a tab layout widget. Um, right now it supports adding named tabs and switching between them from the code. Um, I will be working on that this week as well. Uh, namely, the things that need to be done are adding the visual tab icons so they can actually have um, little shapes that look like uh, folder labels. Um, and then implementing the touch input to be able to change between tabs. Right now, the uh, the code exists, but it's not actually hooked up to take input from the touch screen yet. Um, sort of a, a, a side project that I got started on while I was working on that tab layout is a, uh, a tile grid inflator utility. This takes a small 3x3 three three tile sprite sheet and inflates it into a larger tile grid by repeating the center row and column tiles as needed to fill up to the desired size. Um, so my use case for this was the uh, the visual uh, little icon um, images that are used in the tab layout. But I think this idea of being able to take a small sprite sheet and make a larger rectangle out of it, um, it will come in handy in a couple other places as well. I have a few spots like buttons and other things that I think this will be helpful for. Um, I also started uh, from there peeking into the core a little bit inside of uh, the tile grid object. I was looking for a way to be able to update the bitmap. Uh, ordinarily, when you create a tile grid, you give it a bitmap, um, and there is not currently a way to change the bitmap. So if you want a different one, you need to create a separate tile grid. And there are ways you can create it and switch between uh, multiple tile grids, uh, but it would be pretty handy if we could just switch um, a, an existing bitmap to a new tile grid. So I dove a bit into the core to try to implement that functionality, and I had a fair amount of success. I uh, submitted a PR with that and got some good feedback. So I've got a couple of items to take care of this week in order to get that ready to go. Um, and that's a, a thing as well that um, I have in mind using it in this tab layout, uh, specifically making the difference between the active and the inactive tabs. Uh, but I think similar uh, to the inflator, there's going to be lots of other uh, display I.O. Um, use cases that pop up for this as well once we have this functionality. Um, this week, I also published a video on YouTube that shows the process of adding uh, type information to a CircuitPython library. So if anyone is interested in contributing in that way, there's now a, a kind of a video you can watch to get a peek at what that is like. Uh, this week, I am uh, running the meeting today. Um, I intend to finish up the uh, bitmap updating PR based on the feedback that I received. Um, once that is good, then I will move back into the tab layout widget that I was working on and make use of that new functionality to set those active and inactive tabs. Um, and another thing I'd like to do this week is uh, record another video that shows the process of making and submitting uh, PRs. I got some feedback on that typing video, uh, and somebody mentioned that it would be helpful to watch the, uh, the creation and submitting of PRs. So I figure uh, we can make a video with that as well uh, this week. Uh, and possibly from there, I thought about as well, uh, it might be good to have one for the newsletter as well. Like if folks want to see how to submit a PR to the newsletter, uh, maybe we can make a video that shows that as well. Um, and that is it for my status updates. So next up is Ask Patrick W, and I will read theirs. Um, Ask Patrick has been working on a new board PR for the Wemos Lolin C3 Mini. Uh, it's building fine. Uh, now they just need to test all of the pin mappings. 
and uh, they're working out a process for doing that testing. Uh, this is a when I have time type of project, so the PR is in draft, but if anyone has suggestions or feedback on the PR, uh, feel free to ping AskPatrickW, and the PR number is 6256 if you're interested in finding that in the uh, core repository. Uh, so next up, I will send it over to Dan. Okay. Um, last week, I, I debugged two unrelated UART problems on the RP2040. That was with board.uart and had to do with garbage collection. And on the ESP32S2, that had to do with... Um, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> ESP32 was was uh, the other thing, and RP2040, they added, they started handling an additional interrupt in the SDK, which we hadn't handled, and it caused things to hang up. So then I released CircuitPython 725 to fix that, to pick, fix another bug that Jeff fixed, and two other bugs that Jeff fixed, which were NRF, PWM, pin allocation, and MP3 looping. Then also released uh, CircuitPython 7.3.0 beta 1 because we were, it was about two weeks since the 7.3.0 beta 0, and we may as well catch up because otherwise we can't point people to a named release to have them try the latest stuff. It's much easier for them than to point them to off into the S3 land stuff. Uh, there's some problem with the release process, the circuitpython.org update job is not working properly so i have had to run, be running it by hand for the past several releases and i made a mistake when i did the 725 one and i did it in main so it thought that there were 725 releases for all the new boards that were in 730 so i redid that one and it seems to have fixed the problem it, some people on twitter found this so we had to respond to it to be able to to uh to appear uh, responsive on Twitter. We were responsive. We didn't have to appear responsive. Um, I reviewed a bunch of PRs from Jeff and from Lady Ada and other people. Um, I'm debugging a very weird I2C issue on ESP32S2. Somebody was trying to do motor controlling with a stepper motor, and it ran really slow, and it's because there was this 10 millisecond gap between I2C transactions, which was ridiculously large. And it seems to have to do with the frequency, uh, the I2C frequency. The I2C code in the ESP IDF is really a mess and keeps changing. There's a lot of churn in that code. The workaround is to just choose a higher uh, I2C frequency for right now. And I'm also debugging some crashes of the ESP32 SPI um, code that is using the airlift. It seems that the, what people see is that they do a lot of requests and it might crash after a couple of minutes or maybe 45 minutes or an hour, a couple of hours. The problem seems to be present only when you use the portal libraries like the PyPortal plus portal base. But I tried a very similar example with the bare wi Wi-Fi and requests um, stuff, and I could not get it to crash several, several, several hours. So there's something odd. There's something about what the library is doing. It's not necessarily anything wrong, but it's different, and it might be exercising a bug in the uh, ESP32 uh, SPI code. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is Jeff. Yeah, so last week I created a Python program for visualizing the content of a floppy disk, or more specifically, a flex file representing the content of that floppy disk, and that is up on GitHub. I finished up a pair of languishing PRs to add support for the .wrap feature of the RP2040 PIO peripheral. Uh, I fixed a problem with looping MP3s that affected at least SAMD51. I proposed some changes to allow type checking code to be optimized out of MPY files, but Dan had a better alternative that didn't require any changes to the core, so I ended up closing up that pull request. And uh, I spent some time this past week reviewing pull requests as well. Uh, so this week, I have a fresh report of MP3 playback problems uh, to investigate from the forums, this time on RP2040. And I am trying again to get conversion of disk images from the A2R format to the WAS format working. And I had some success with that already this morning. Um, 
So I have a, a pull request out on that that I will be updating. And I will make a one minute video about this Flex Visualizer program. Just uh, show a couple and explain what it's about. So you can look for that on the Adafruit YouTube channel sometime this week. Then um, we're really close to wrapping up the floppies. I've, I've said that a lot, but uh, I think that the last thing uh, is to get the CircuitPython built-in floppy module and Adafruit floppy library wrapped up. So that means getting the core PR merged and then releasing the library. And um, yeah, that is more or less it. That does in fact reflect what we discussed in the internal meeting, so that's good. And then in soon news, during May and June, I'm traveling in Europe with my wife. And if there are any uh, CircuitPython slash Adafruit slash cool people along our travel routes, I'd love to meet you for a coffee or for a meal. So there is a list of cities that we plan to be visiting in the notes document. If that is where you are, or that's close enough to where you are that you might uh, come in for the day, please DM me on Discord or ping me out in a public channel if you are interested in working something out. It'd be cool. I would love to meet anybody because uh, people are great. And that's what I got. All right. Thanks, Jeff. That definitely sounds like a lot of fun. Um, next up is Katni. All right, so this last week, uh, merge the new .git ignore into cookie cutter. The next step is to Adabot patch it across all the libraries. Started testing PyLeap, uh, immediately found issues, one of which turned out to be a CircuitPython issue present since after 7.1.1, which is to say 7.1.1 works, but 7.2x does not. I provided feedback on some of the upcoming layout and text in the mockups and made a couple of feature, su feature suggestions as well. Um, and obviously filed issues on both PyLeap and CircuitPython for the um, initial issue I found, which is that uh, the code doesn't run until you hit reset. 7.1.1 um, automatically reloads. Uh, wrote the async IO essentials template, deployed it to its first guide, had it reviewed by Dan for content and accu content accuracy, et cetera, before sending it on to Anne and Lamore. So that's finally ready to go. Check it out in the ESP32 S2 Feather Guide if you're interested. It will eventually, like all Essentials templates, be in all the board guides that support async I.O. Uh, verified that all references to the Adafruit Web Serial ESP tool were updated to the um, one that we're using that it was originally based on. Um, found two that were missed and passed those on to Melissa to be updated. I wrote the basic Cutie Pie Charger BFF guide. The Arduino demo wasn't working quite right, so I did not include code in the guide. The plan was to port the Arduino code to CircuitPython, but until the math is corrected, that's on hold. And actually, um, that's pretty much on hold until um, it comes up. Like, we're the, the, the base guide has everything you need to know um, about what it does. You don't really need to use code with it. This week, um, I already started fixing the Feather ESP32 S2 Pretty Pins diagram to clarify that vSensor is being is being only a power pin and not having the other features of pin D7 accessible from it. And then I need to re-upload it to the guide and the PCB repo. Um, update the front page images and the guide schematic and fab print and PCB files for the revisions on the Pi UART, the BLE sniffer, and PCF8523. I have a potential update to the Circuit Playground library. Um, I need to test whether it fits Frozen into CircuitPython before doing anything with it, and then submit a PR if Frozen Fit is confirmed. Added a property called Buttons that provides a keypad setup for both of the buttons together, so you can use the buttons with keypad, which includes debouncing and so on. Required tweaking a few other things as well to make the library work with both the keypad button setup and the digital I.O. button setup. It works great, but again, if it doesn't fit, um, then it won't be included. Uh, next up is the guide for the ESP32 S3 Feather. We'll be mostly mirroring from the S2 Feather guide, um, making sure the pages say S2 slash S3 or simply ESP32 to make them agnostic to either version. Um, this next thing is not um, actually happening because, uh, like I said, the Cutie Pie BFF guide is on hold. And then continue testing PyLeap. The plan is to go through all the available projects in PyLeap to ensure they work properly and then sort out a couple new ones to make sure that the adding a project process works as intended, and then think about what further projects to add, which is either new or ported old projects. And um, Jerry's not here, but uh, it turns out the ESP AT control library, uh, we're not gonna archive it, but we don't support it anymore. Um, so I need to add warnings to the repository to say that we no longer support it, but you're free to continue using it. 
And then this weekend I started PyCon prep, went through what hardware I intended to have and sorted out what I still need, started organizing the hardware that I do have to prepare for travel and started writing the demo to include on the Circuit Playground Blue Fruits that I'm bringing for the open spaces. And that's what I've got. All right. Thanks, Katni. Uh, next up for status updates is KMatch. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Uh, so I'm continuing work on integrating large displays, uh, so-called dot clock displays, that they can run with a new peripheral that's available in the ESP32 S3 mm -hmm. called the LCD peripheral. Uh, and along those lines, I got to REPL. So now the REPL shows up on this display driven by the ESP32 and the frame buffer library. So that was a big step for me, thanks to the frame buffer library. Um, but in the process, I do observe some significant glitches. Uh, at first, I thought it was tearing, which I think is when you write to the frame buffer while it's actually drawing on the screen. Uh, but in retrospect, I don't think that's what's going on, since even a stationary image uh, sort of glitches while CircuitPython is doing calculations, even like multiplications and things like that. Uh, and it seems to be affected with higher dot clock frequencies. So uh, I'm suspecting that the screen uh, is going strange whenever CircuitPython may be accessing the RAM, or it's possible it causes some other delays that then the LCD peripheral gets slowed down and out of sync with where it thought it should be. So um, along those lines, I'm, I'm learning both on the ESP32 S3 side what's possible and what the ESP IDF has to offer, uh, as well as what CircuitPython can do. Uh, and I think that driving this kind of display is a little bit different than the other displays like the SPI or I2, I2C ones, since um, CircuitPython may need to trigger this display to go refresh. So there, I think there basically may need to be some coordination between the display refreshing uh, and when it's doing some calculations. So uh, just a few things here briefly. I, I think right now the LCD peripheral is just constantly refreshing the screen with its dot clock uh, operation. Uh, and that may get slowed down while CircuitPython is doing something. So I'm wondering if CircuitPython can actually communicate to the this LCD peripheral and tell it actually when it should go refresh so I can time it. Uh, also, there's some callback functions, which I need to understand if maybe I could use that to coordinate between the two. Um, and then uh, I assumed actually that the running at a high dot clock may be the best. So basically the amount of time to refresh the screen would be small so that then I could leave some other time for CircuitPython to access RAM or do some other processing. But then I realized that's only the case if, if CircuitPython is controlling when the refresh is actually performed. So a lot of things in there to figure out. Uh, and along those lines this week, I need to make a list of all the glitches and things I see in different cases. So there can be kind of a to-do list for that and probably put in the issue that I've got. Uh, but I'm thinking about taking a breather from that and actually working on a bowling training aid. My daughter is in the high school bowling team and learning. And I've been watching the coaches, how they teach the kids. And uh, one aspect is, is getting feedback of how you're doing is really hard. It's hard to bowl and watch what the ball is doing at the same time. So look at maybe having a position sensor to measure where you're throwing the ball versus where you wanted to. And maybe an LED strip or something like that to show you where you hit it versus where you meant to. So anyway, maybe take a breather and learn some, something about distance sensors and uh, how to do that. So that's my week. Nice. Thanks, Kmatch. That definitely sounds like a fascinating Thanks. project. Uh, next up is maker Melissa. Hello. Uh, last week, I worked on updating the Whippersnapper firmware uploader to use uh, NPM packages instead of pointing to other repos, uh, which involved many changes and lots of bug fixes. And um, I also finished updating guides that were pointing to the old ESP tool. And I started looking at an alternative MIPI driver for the Raspberry Pi. And this week I'll continue looking at that driver and um, I'll also check out a potential bug with Whippersnapper that only occurred on Chromebook. And that's where I'm at. All right. Thanks, uh, Maker Melissa. Uh, and um, 
our final uh, person for status updates is going to be Tammy Makes Things. Thanks. So last week I did more work on the CircuitPython card deck library that I'm building, and I streamed twice working on that. Um, I'm trying to, on my stream, do a good job of explaining the why behind the decisions I'm making and how I'm doing this, so it's not going as quickly as it would if I was just coding it, which is fine. Um, and I had my last week in my old job, so my schedule was ridiculous, including several multi-way code merges of gigantic blobs of XML, which was a special treat. Um, this week, I'm planning on streaming twice. Um, Wednesday uh, evening Pacific time and Saturday around noon Pacific time, and maybe a pop-up stream Friday afternoon Pacific time. We'll see how that goes. Still working on my card deck library, hoping to get through all of the scaffolding this week so that we can start working on the fun display I.O. part. Um, I'm also doing a little bit of digging around in the Python standard library to see how hard it would be to bring in some more of the funk tools stuff and also maybe data classes. And I just started my new job, which is a Python data engineering job that I'm really excited about, but my schedule is going to be a little bit unpredictable this week and probably next week too. So that's what I got. All right. Thanks, Tammy. Um, and that gets us to the end of the status updates section. Uh, so the final section of the meeting is going to be the in the weeds section. Uh, as a reminder, in the weeds, this is an opportunity for more long form discussion, either uh, things that come out of status updates or things identified ahead of time. Uh, if you have any topics for in the weeds, please make sure to add them at the bottom of our notes doc. Um, and right now we don't have any topics in the weeds. Um, so unless anybody adds something real quick, then I think we are good on that today. Um, if anybody is working that on that, I'll take this opportunity to mention uh, for next week, we actually have a slight change to the in the weeds section. So uh, basically next week we have a hard cut at an hour. Uh, this meeting runs again anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes typically. It just depends how many people uh, are here for the round robins and uh, you know how much stuff has happened during the week. Um, but next week, we are on a schedule, and uh, we have a hard stop at an hour. And due to that, we are going to go without the uh, In the Weeds section next week. So uh, if you do have something to discuss, you can add it to the document for the following week. Um, or you can also always feel free to bring stuff up on Discord anytime. Um, so with that, I will also get into the wrap-up here. Uh, all right, so this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting uh, for April the 11th, 2022. Uh, thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to help support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us who are paid to work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on all major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, you can visit adafruitdaily.com in order to su subscribe to that. The next meeting will be held as usual, uh, Monday the 18th of April, and will begin at the standard time of 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, but we will have that hard cut at 3 p.m. Eastern to end for next week. And we went about 50 minutes today, so uh, if we do something similar next week, then we'll be uh, in the perfect time for that. Um, so let's see, this meeting uh, is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. Uh, and that's going to do it for today. Thank you to everyone who participated, and we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.